Hey guys, my name is Savannah and today we're jumping in to take a look at Zoo Tampa at Lowry Park. I visited Zoo Tampa in Florida back in May of 2022 and I've held on to this footage for way, way too long. But here it is. We're going to walk through, take a look at the entire zoo and all the animals that I saw just to get a little bit of Planet Zoo inspiration, Prehistoric Kingdom inspiration. And heck, you could probably even use some of this stuff for some planet coaster inspiration. If you see some fences or some buildings that you like, you might be able to cross over and bring it into that game as well. If you are new to the channel and you're just finding me for this vlog, I am a keeper myself. I've worked with animals for a little under 10 years and I enjoy one, touring zoos and seeing zoo facilities but also playing games like I just mentioned, Prehistoric Kingdom, Planet Zoo, and making creative builds in those projects as well, or in those games as well. So let's get this started with just talking a little bit about Zoo Tampa, some information for you guys. Zoo Tampa at Lowry Park is one of the most popular zoos in the Southeastern United States with close to 1 million visitors annually. The zoo originated in the 1930s as a municipal department with a small number of Florida native species. It grew gradually throughout the next four decades, but struggled to meet the developing professional standards of modern zoos. In 1982, community leaders created the Lowry Park Zoo Association to take over management of the zoo for the city of Tampa with the goal of creating a world-class zoo through a public-private partnership. The association then became the Lowry Park Zoological Society of Tampa, as it remains today. Working with a national zoo designer, the society was able to create a modern 24-acre facility that opened to the public in 1988 and shortly after earned the accreditation by the Association of Zoos and Aquarium, the AZA, so you might hear uh, different facilities being accredited by the AZA, that is kind of the overseeing association that sets the, the standards for animal care in zoological facilities. Zoo Tampa has now grown to what now encompasses 56 acres of naturalistic animal habitats in a lush tropical garden setting. The zoo offers popular educational programming, fun recreational amenities, up close animal encounters and engaging, engaging seasonal events for which it has won uh, many different awards in the zoo industry. The zoo emphasizes endangered, threatened, and vulnerable species from the climates similar to that of the Tampa Bay region, with park areas devoted to Asia, Africa, Australia, and Florida. Our animal habitats balance support for the maximum well-being of the animals with the importance of engaging our guests and inspiring them pr to protect and preserve wildlife. Random animal encounters, behind the scene tours, and other special personalized experiences expand the zoo's opportunity to provide unforgettable natural connections. The zoo now cares for more than 1,000 animals in total. The zoo participates in nearly 100 of AZA's networks for managing an endangered, threatened species, and has won numerous awards for its animal conservation and management programs. The state of Florida formally recognized the zoo in 2004 as a center for biodiversity and conservation. It exhibits the most comprehensive species of endangered Florida wildlife anywhere. This is best reflected in the work we do every day at the Animal Care Campus, which features the uh, Animal Care Annex and our Katherine Lowry Strats Veterinary Hospital, which has earned accreditation with the AZA, oh, I'm sorry, with the American Association of Animal Hospitals, the AAHA, <laughs> twice since opening in 2015. There are only, uh, oh, we are the only zoo in the USA to have ever earned that distinction. So a little bit about the zoo. I found it a wonderful park to tour. As you might have already noticed by just the few habitats we've looked at so far, the tapir, the tiger, and then now the bears here, everything is just very highly themed. So looking at it from a guest perspective, it's a very fun park to tour and look around at everything because they're not just 
animals in a pen. It's not just uh, fenced in fields with animals in them or pits with animals at the bottom. As you can see by this tunnel here, everything is just very decorated. It's very clear, you know, they mentioned they worked with a zoo designer, that the zoo designer knew what they were doing to one kind of bring the guests in, make them feel like they are in the area that the animals or the region that the animals would be living in. Because uh, the zoo is separated into major sections it mentioned before, like Asia, Africa, different regional sections like that. And as we look at our little rhino friend here, I just love the colors. I've been to many zoos that still separate animals into regions, but they don't, I don't know, nothing's like bright and colorful. It's kind of all naturalistic and and the habitats are all very naturalistic with these guys as well. But the guest facing areas are just very bright and very colorful. And that was one thing that was really inspiring to me. As a planet zoo builder um, and prehistoric kingdom builder, I tend to lean more towards natural colors anyway, like earth colors and stuff like that. And I need to remind myself to use more color to make things kind of pop and stand out a bit. So that's one thing that I took away from this zoo. Looking at it from an animal care perspective, all the habitats are very well designed for the animals that they're housing. We're going to take a look at our Indian gharial here who is down in the water. So I'm going to pan through the habitat again just to show you guys what the habitats look like. And then I do try to find the animals to show you the actual animals uh, themselves. But you can see in this habitat, the backing is all made of like little logs that kind of stand up and vary in uh, different heights and stuff. Definitely a type of fence that I've recreated in Planet Zoo before. You can see our little turtle friends down there and the gharial is down there somewhere. I was unfortunately not able to catch the binturong, which I was very upset about because these guys are such cool animals and I love watching them kind of walk around. But unfortunately, it was off exhibit. As you can see, that little sign says the animal is temporarily off exhibit. But I did really love this habitat. These vertical wires are something that I hadn't really thought about as a barrier to keep the animals in. But they have a really good effect that you you really your eyes can very easily pass through them. And if you're just looking at the habitat, you can kind of pretend that they're not there. So they give a really good viewing experience for the guest. Again, something that I need to replicate. And let me tell you, so many turtles. This zoo has so many turtles, so many tortoises, like every other corner that you turn around, you are greeted by another turtle or tortoise. I do show them off, all of them, because I think all the animals deserve their recognition. Uh, but the habitats are, are basically the same. They are just little fenced in areas with lots of foliage and a little house at the back. Of course, they have their information as well. But turtles and tortoises are pretty easy to care for in that sense, as long as they're in the right climate. Um, being a reptile, lighting is really important for them. Heating is really important for them. So as long as you got that right, they basically just need some, you know, some foliage and some open dirt area to kind of run around. So yeah, there's lots of turtles, lots of tortoises. We're walking around to the right is kind of the backside of the rhino habitat. And I really liked that if you kind of saw a glimpse of that, there's those vertical uh, logs, pillars, you can kind of still see in to every area of the habitat, regardless of where you're walking. And I really like that too. It, it really allows you to get lots of different angles on the rhinos. And here we are entering the Florida area. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at this pond. There's actually nothing in this pond. But again, something that I forget about when I'm personally building in Planet Zoo or Prehistoric Kingdom is open space. <laughs> open space is really uh, important. You know, this is a really pretty view. Um, all of the duckweed on the top of that lake is is really cool to look at. And it gives guests a place to rest and just kind of maybe eat lunch, have a snack, let your kids get out of the crowd for a second. I don't personally have kids, so I'm just kind of guessing, but have a little space to pull your family off to the side if you need a little bit of a break. Um, so open space is really important. Um, they did a really good job at hiding lots of uh, holding areas, backstage stuff, which is kind of unfortunate for me because I like to see those areas. Um, but it does give a very Disney themed feeling again that you you really only see what they want you to see and the guest perspective 
um, is really um, high quality, I guess, if that makes sense on how to describe it. You really are immersed in what the zoo is trying to immerse you in. There's a mixture of different fences. Again, when I'm walking around here, just trying to show you anything and everything, even if it's not an animal. This vlog is about 39 minutes long. Um, we're about 10 minutes in or so now. So if you haven't grabbed a snack or a drink already, I highly recommend doing so because I'm gonna be chatting at you for quite a few more minutes as we kind of tour this zoo. What we're approaching on now is one of my favorite sections. Look at this little village area. Again, so many bright colors. This is a little restaurant um, that wasn't open, uh, or maybe it's not a restaurant. Maybe it's just like a snack bar area. We didn't stop and eat here. We're walking straight on through because at the end of this are the manatees. So uh, the Tampa Zoo actually has a really uh, well-developed and um, well-functioning, I guess, conservation program and rescue and rehabilitation program for the Florida manatees. So you can see them down there. They have some lettuce floating on the top of the water that they are munching on. But there are some manatees down in this pool here. We're going to go down below because they do have an underwater viewing section for them. But then over to the left, what we'll view in just a minute is actually the med pools. So they bring in manatees that are hurt, injured or sick, help them, you know, get them back to full health and then re-release them into the wild. We stopped and talked with one of the staff members for quite a while on their program. And it was really interesting to hear how successful and uh, how they deal with the manatees. Unfortunately, it sounds like most of the injuries of the manatees that come into the program are boat accidents because they're such curious animals. And so unfortunately they approach lots of things in the water, even if that means the engines and the propellers, the boats of people uh, in Florida out on the water. So really unfortunate for them, but good thing that this program does exist uh, so that they can get the help they want. On the way to the underwater viewing area, we have uh, the typical reptile house. So walls of different squares with different habitats, uh, different animals in them. So there are lots and lots of animals in here. I won't stop and show absolutely every single one of them, but you can see some of the bigger, more prominent ones are kind of right up at the front, including this snake that I forget what species it is because this was back in May. And I knew then and I don't know now. So if you recognize it, please let me know down in the uh, comment section below. But we're going to take a look at all these guys. There's this huge turtle. Again, turtles, tortoises everywhere in this zoo. But look at this guy. He looks like a little dinosaur. Really, really cool looking. Um, uh, underwater there just kind of hanging out. We do get to there's like an iguana in here as well that was pretty active. Um, and then, yeah, just lots of other little animals. I skipped over some parts because, oh, look, another turtle. We should have a turtle tally. <laughs> you guys keep track of how many turtles we see. And at the end, let me know, um, because, again, lots of turtles and, and tortoises. Um, but I did skip over some parts because it was rather dark. And so the lighting was kind of bad. And sometimes you could really only see my reflection in the glass which is not that entertaining to watch. So I did kind of cut those out. But continuing to walk through here, they do have some uh, aquarium e exhibits, which is pretty cool. Again, all geared towards teaching you about the environments and how to coexist with these animals in a positive way so that we don't harm them and that we can still use the areas as humans want to use them. There's not many zoos that I've been to that also incorporate some aquarium aspects. So it was kind of cool to see fish swimming around and a little eel there in the little hole in the log. Um, so that was kind of cool to see a mixture of both uh, fully aquatic uh, species like fish and eels and and the, you know, the turtle that was at the bottom of this little exhibit. We got a lionfish here and I believe there's some like seahorses and things like that. Really cool to look at. These guys are always fun um, at in San Diego, where I'm from. We have the Birch Aquarium, which has kind of all of these aquatic uh, fish species. And then we have things like the San Diego Zoo, which has kind of all the other animals. There's SeaWorld and then there's the Wild Animal Park or what's now known as the San Diego Safari Park. Um, so I'm kind of surrounded by many different uh, zoological facilities. Uh, very lucky there. This is a little uh, iguana that was pretty active climbing around on his log and stuff. A lot of these reptiles being uh, that most of them are like nocturnal and they just kind of hang out in their enclosures. So it's really kind of rare to see them move around. So I kind of stopped and watched this guy for quite a while because it's interesting to see them when they actually move and act like animals 
and you can tell that they're not just uh, statues. Not that any, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that any zoo has ever done that, but uh, you know, you get my point. A lot of these small animals are oftentimes just kind of sitting there hanging out. Um, if they don't need to expend the energy, they're not going to, um, that kind of thing. So it was kind of cool to see them uh, moving around, even if it was just a little bit. We are approaching the underwater viewing area for the manatees. Excuse the lighting while I get closer to the actual water. It fixes itself here in just a minute. Look, there's another turtle in the water, but also manatees. <laughs> there are quite a few in this pool right here. Um, I don't know exactly how many. There's another turtle, um, but they're really pretty to watch, like walk around and walk around. What am I talking about? Swim around swim around in their pool. They all have like algae growing on them and they just seem like such gentle animals. I don't know much about manatees, but it was really cool to see them. When I used to go to SeaWorld as a kid years and years ago, they used to have manatees. So that was my first time seeing a manatee. Um, and I haven't seen one since because they're no longer there at SeaWorld. So it was really cool to see these guys swim around. They came up real close to the glass. We sat here and watched them for 30 minutes or so because they're just they're just really cool to watch as they kind of swim around, explore their habitat. Again, munch on that lettuce. There was a ton of lettuce, uh, which they kind of went through by the time we got down here, um, but they did kind of munch on that on the surface of the water. Moving on out of the underwater viewing section for the manatees, we come to some otters. And one was actually right up on the glass. So you can see it kind of swimming around here. The first thing that you see is the underwater viewing. We'll walk around and take a look at the habitat, um, not underwater, the rest of the habitat. But you can't really see the otter. He was busy playing in the water and he didn't really come out. He was kind of doing these circles and diving. I always think it's kind of cool when they pick to do these things like right in front of the glass. So you can see he just he kept going again. We watched him for quite a little while. Here's the rest of his habitat fairly plain, some logs and things for him to run under, a little waterfall that I imagine he would have fun playing in and running down that runs to a different pond with another underwater viewing section. He just wasn't over there, so we didn't walk over there. Uh, going up onto this little raised deck area, love the fencing, by the way. This is a really cool fence, really cool way to um, line paths but we're walking over to the upper area of the manatees again. So you get many different opportunities to view them. This one I actually liked because you don't have that screen in front of you. There's another turtle. There's a bunch of turtles. Uh, you don't have that screen in front of you. So it's a really cool way to see them unobstructed down in the water below. And it's themed. As you can see, there's this little like fishing building there where they go. Uh, there's clearly stairs where that's kind of a service area for the staff members. Um, but yeah, there's two different pools on either side. That is the one in the far side that we were looking at before. And don't know if they're actually connected or if they are separate pools. But then here are those medical pools that I was talking about. You can see that they are actually connected. Um, all of them are. They just have guillotines in the middle that you can raise or lower to make it so the animals have to stay in one section or the other. And it is connected to the main pool that we first looked at as well. So I imagine that, uh, you know, as cases come in and they heal and get better, you can keep them confined when they're first uh, brought in and really hurt and then kind of give them more space as they kind of heal. I'm only speculating there because I've never worked with manatees, so I don't know. But just uh, basing off of my knowledge on uh, healing animals and, and getting them better. This guy here is actually not injured anymore. So I was really fascinated to talk to the keeper. You can see her talking on the other side. Once those people went away, I walked over there and asked her about this guy. He actually, unfortunately, was caught in a snap trap out in the wild and he's lost all of his uh, first digits on that left foot. So he no longer has any of his toes. He is not in any pain. However, because he was injured in the wild for so long, he formed a habit of limping like that. And that's just how he gets around. Unfortunately, he, he still has that habit. Um, but the keeper says he jumps up on those raised platforms. He runs, he gets excited. So it doesn't hinder his movement in any way. He just looks like he's injured. So she said they generally have somebody outside the habitat talking about him because he clearly looks like he's in pain. 
Um, but she did assure me that he is not at all. And he's in a zoo because he obviously would not thrive in the wild, unfortunately, due to his injury. But this is a really, really pretty habitat. I think this is the newest section of the zoo, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, please let me know down in the comments below. But it's really pretty. It's all interconnected. Um, you can see there are little shoots that go in between each major area of the habitat. And so you can kind of section off and split animals up if you need to, or let them be all together if you want to. You can shift them back and forth, which really allows keepers to get in there because I'm assuming these cats are not worked with uh, free contact. So you'd have to work uh, protected contact with them, just meaning that you can't share the same space. Um, and then on the other side are the bears. So this section, yeah, is really, really pretty. All very uh, new and all the wood looks all new, which makes me feel like it was just built recently um, because it rains a lot in Florida. And as you can see with this aviary, the wood doesn't necessarily look brand new that long. It gets kind of weathered, but all the railing and stuff looks all brand new. This little owl there, he was actually holding a mouse. I don't think you can see it in the actual uh, footage, but he was holding his mouse and having his breakfast. And this aviary had a bunch of different sections to it with a bunch of different birds. I just kind of passed over the sign there. We're just gonna kind of walk around and take a look. It's really difficult to see the little birds in there, but cool to see an aviary. I was really excited to see skunks because at the time I was working with skunks, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find them. <laughs> they were not in there. Well, they're probably in there, but skunks being nocturnal, they are probably hiding in little burrows and sleeping. So I did not see any of them walking around, but they had a cool habitat nonetheless. Here is another aviary with something in it. I forget. Uh, it's back there. I think it's a bird of prey, but I forget what's actually in there. It is two sided. So there is another side on the left, which we'll look at uh, right now. We'll go over there and see there's a little service area in the middle. Um, this is the bird is above. I think it takes me a minute to realize, aha, there they are <laughs> little owls. They have really cool spaces in here. I, uh, I really like how these aviaries are designed. And again, something that I want to, uh, replicate. I think after this, did I include, I may not have included, no, cause we didn't actually catch it. We were late and we didn't catch like the keeper talk with the bears. Um, you can see them over there right now on the left hand side uh, with the vultures all around. They were getting fed through the bars over there by the keepers. But these bears, these black bears have a really cool, well-designed habitat, lots of open space. There's lots of vultures everywhere. Oh, I did include it. There you go. So I was a little bit late, but here you go. These are the black bears getting fed through the bars. Um, and that keeper on the left hand side is just talking about them, giving some information about them while these bears uh, get some treats. One of the bears did not want to come over at first. And so it took a lot of encouragement and then they finally came over so that both of them were getting some food. And then again, uh, those vultures are just kind of waiting for the, um, the leftovers. They're everywhere in the zoo, almost as many as there are turtles. Uh, <laughs> looking at the wolf habitat now, I only saw one of them, which is actually just in that burrow behind the vulture there back down inside. You can't really see it on camera. One of them did come out and walk around for like maybe 10 seconds. It really got up just to change its positioning and then it sat back down in its little den. So unfortunately didn't really get a good glimpse on those guys, but again, nocturnal. So they're going to be, you know, sleeping in the daytime, awake in the nighttime. And then we have this main section with a carousel in the middle, some more snacks, some like carnival type games. And then we are approaching uh, Africa. And before we actually get into the main of the Africa section, we're gonna take this little left-hand turn to Penguin Beach. They've got some African penguins over here, which are very cute. And I, I did actually use this one as inspiration for an African penguin habitat that I built in Planet Zoo because they have the cutest little house. Um, I love their little yellow house with the little doors that they can go inside. But here you can see their habitat is fairly big. Um, they just decide to hang out all together on the, uh, on the right hand side. <laughs> you can see all of them over there in a little group. They just kind of hang out together. They've got some toys in the water, some hula hoops they can play with. Little waterfall, very well covered with this tree in the center, which gives them plenty of shade. 
So it was really cool to see them. And now we're walking into the main Africa area. We get into this kind of plaza area. There is the, uh, I think that's like the African tram on the right hand side. We didn't actually ride that. We just kind of walked around and looked at everything. We're going over here to the left inside those doors. I went in there, but I didn't film it. It's a massive uh, eating area that's all air conditioned, which in Florida was fantastic. So we sat in there and we ate our lunch uh, in the air conditioning and the shade, which was great. There's bathrooms right there. So you get a nice little rest spot. And then taking a look at this habitat, I forget what was in it. Uh, the sign just passed by, I think so. Uh, but the animal wasn't in there, unfortunately, but still really cool to see. All the animals do have like fans and things like that to keep air circulating so that they don't get too hot. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And then obviously Africa section means wide open grassland spaces with lots of mixed species habitat. So here you can see the giraffes in the front the elephants in the back. I don't actually think that they are together. I do believe they're separated, but the way the habitat is designed is made to make you think that they're all together. Um, but yeah, there's three giraffes right there, just kind of hanging out. They seemed a lot closer than they actually look on the camera. I'm filming with my GoPro, so it does have a bit of a fish eye lens, which tends to, I feel, make things look like they're a little bit further away but he's actually relatively close and you can get a pretty good view on him. He's just kind of standing there hanging out. The elephants, however, are way in the back and there was a few of them, but they were kind of hard to see what was going on. The little tram does go on the back of those habitats. So I imagine if you ride the tram, you get uh, a much better view of the elephants in the back. We have a quick little aviary here. This guy was like flying around like crazy. There's actually two of them in there. You can see the little perch swinging back and forth. Unfortunately, he did that right before I walked up. And as soon as I walked up with the camera, shocker, he stood still and didn't move um, as all animals do. But he was flying around and hopping around and having a really good time before I walked up here and ruined it with my filming. Um, but those are kind of cool to see. African elephant sign here. We have a pool that they can bathe in. It was rather hot that day. I was surprised that none of them were kind of hanging out in the water, but they have a really nice little water section here with some stairs down, but also a ramp on the left-hand side. And I thought that was a pretty cool design. So obviously they would come up pretty close and you would get a really good view of them if they were in that pool. They've got a couple different shade structures. However, this one here closest, I imagine that the sunshade got too weathered and uh, ripped because clearly it's not installed right now. So they're all kind of under the other one in the back, which is farther away. Going over to the rhino reserve, there is actually a baby rhino at the zoo. Um, I imagine it's still there, although it's now uh, like eight months older than when I saw it because I took this footage so long ago. But it's back here running around. You can see in the back, that's the African tram or African um, car. <laughs> it's not really a tram. It's like a truck you get in the back of. It drives you around. That's the ride I was talking about. But you can see the rhinos have big open space here. Uh, just lots of dirt because rhinos are really destructive. So there's not too much in their habitat other than some trees and some logs and things. You can see the baby real quick back there. He does walk over closer, so I do get a much better view on him in just a minute as he kind of walks over with mom. But it was really cute to see him kind of running around. And I always like to see the baby animals, especially when they're out on exhibit with mom and dad. It's a really cool thing to uh, to be able to witness. So these guys are walking around and I uh, totally forget what kind of rhinos these are. Um, I did look at the sign again. I took this footage so long ago. I knew then and I don't remember now. And my rhino knowledge is not uh, up to par apparently because I cannot identify them just by looking at them. But there's little baby following mom around. They kind of walk over to the side and then they come back. This is the African um, wild dog, the painted dog. These guys are all in their burrows just kind of hanging out. So unfortunately we don't get a really good uh, glimpse of them but they have a really well uh, foliaged grassy habitat with uh, just kind of a traditional chain link fence with kind of an arched top uh, around their habitat. And then we have a pygmy hippo, which is in the water doing pygmy hippo things. Uh, it just kind of was hanging down 
in the water um, and couldn't really get a good view on it. There's not an underwater viewing section in this habitat, but there you go. You can see his butt and the top of him. Um, he's kind of licking uh, the wall down there, so I, I don't know what he's doing, but you can see a little pygmy hippo there. He has a really big uh, habitat, a really clean pool, huge pool to swim around in, which is kind of cool for him. And then we have some red river hogs that are sleeping in the back. These smaller habitats are what I kind of like to see. You get a lot closer to the animals and they generally include a lot of the animals that aren't um, like the big ticket animals. You know, you don't go to a zoo thinking, oh, I want to see the red river hog, but it's cool to see them uh, nonetheless. And they're kind of way in the back there, just off center uh, in the in the angle that I'm shooting at here. They kind of look like dirt and rocks, but they are back there. Walking into this covered gazebo area, we're going to take a look at the okapi. Love okapis. They're one of my favorite animals to see. Um, we have some at the San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park. So I've I've seen these guys quite often within zoos uh, growing up and just visiting. Really cool animal. They have a really uh, velvety look to them and those stripes on the back legs. I believe they're actually a relative of uh, giraffes. So they're really cool. Again, just a fenced in grassy area. It's got some coverage, lots of trees. You can see in the back, like a holding area with some stalls. This is back more so in the main area of Africa. We've got some emus and some uh, wallaby in there. I didn't really see any of the emus, but the wallaby was kind of up front here eating out of this little dish hanging out. So it was kind of cool to see him. I don't know if the emus were just hiding or off exhibit or what, but this guy was cool to see nonetheless, just kind of hanging out and munching on whatever it is he's munching on. Again, lots of colors, lots of theming. Really cool to see all these habitats. Um, they do actually have a koala as well, which I don't believe I include the footage of because unfortunately they were all indoors and the glare on the glass was really bad. And at least filming wise, all you could see was me and the uh, the other guests. And uh, I didn't really want to show you that because that's not fun or interesting. But they do have a koala. Uh, we're walking through here, all these bright blue and orange colors. This is the petting zoo. Um, I believe we could have gone in there to pet or maybe not. I didn't ask to go in there because I, I don't have a need to pet goats. <laughs> Looking at them is good enough for me. Um, if they come close enough, I imagine you can reach over and pet them. But we've got some goats, a llama back there. Um, they've got a whole bunch of stuff to jump on and uh, play on, which is pretty cool. It's a really big yard leading up to this barn over here on the right hand side, which I believe had uh, like a cow or a miniature horse. It had some other form of barnyard animal uh, back there that wasn't uh, available for petting or interacting with. And then you continue on and go up through the um, little boardwalk area here into these buildings. And I believe the first one we're gonna go into is the bats and then the enclosure directly next to it. Unfortunately, it was empty. It didn't have anything in it. Uh, but this little purple and green house that we're gonna walk into is a, is a bat house. So these are fruit bats going in here. Um, it was fairly hot in here, so I didn't stay in here for very long. Um, it wasn't hot because they heated or anything. It's just there's not a lot of air circulation in the actual building that you're walking in. Um, and it was May in uh, in Florida, so things were, were very hot. <laughs> but you can see there's a couple little ducks at the bottom hanging out, and then the bats are hanging up there in the back, kind of left-hand side of the enclosure. Uh, fruit bats are really big. They're very large. So it's kind of cool to see those guys just hanging out and doing bat things. And leaving the little bat house, we come back out into the main area. You can see the right hand side is the barn for the petting zoo. And then we have a little aviary here that I don't add anything in it, but I thought it was really interesting because it was shaped as a windmill. So I thought it was a really cool shape. We've got some monkeys here looking at these guys on the way out. We are making our way out of the zoo now. These guys have a really cool habitat surrounded by water. Lots of climbing uh, for them to kind of hang out in and uh, jump around in. They have lemurs that we'll take a look at in just a second. Um, again, surrounded by water. But these nice open habitats are really cool for guest perspective. 
because you really have an unobstructed view of the animals. You don't have anything in the way and it kind of more or less feels like you're just hanging out with them. Um, obviously, they're at a safe distance where they cannot uh, get out, but there's nothing in your way taking a look at them. We have the ring-tailed lemurs and the brown lemur, brown, brown lemurs hanging out in that tube right there. You can kind of see them hanging from that rope, the little tail sticking out. Um, but yeah, these guys are actually separated by this water from the habitat on the right hand side. And again, I just thought that was really cool because it kind of connects the water bodies. Um, I'm assuming they use like the same filtration system and things like that. But also depending on where you stand, you kind of see it all as one big habitat. These guys, uh, Siamangs, I think they are, uh, were pretty cool. They were pretty active as well, kind of hanging around and swinging on their toys and stuff like that. So again, always cool to see animals uh, um, hanging out and actually doing things. They're such funny little animals walking around with their hands in the air. But we sat and watched these guys for quite a while. Um, not too long though, because again, it was getting pretty hot. We got there right when it opened uh, in the morning. And by this time, you can kind of see the lighting has changed. It's a lot brighter, a lot hotter. And uh, my San Diego self is not used to humidity or heat. Uh, so I had a really hard time dealing with the heat uh, as it got hotter and hotter in the day, but I didn't want to skip out on any of these last uh, habitats. Unfortunately, we didn't see too many in these last habitats here. I think there's some monkeys that we take a look at. And then the very last thing we're gonna take a look at is the lorikeets, which are some of my favorites um, because I'm a bird person and I love birds and I can never pass up a lorikeet feeding section at a zoo where they give you the little cup of nectar and the lorikeets uh, fly over land on you and they love to eat the little nectar out of your hands. So I can never pass that up. So of course we had to do that. Um, but yeah, just taking a look at a bunch of monkeys. These are the only ones that we were able to see. Very well themed habitat, lots of uh, fake rocks, <laughs> lots of water, lots of fake rocks. These guys have like a termite mound and some climbing uh, features in their enclosure. Um, you can see them walking across the bottom right there. These guys are such funny looking little monkeys. I actually honestly think all monkeys are kind of funny looking, but I'm also not a primate person really. So <laughs> I think they're all kind of funny looking. Um, we got some orangutans uh, just kind of hanging out in the shade. That little picture is very cute. The orangutan baby and mom. But again, same really cool theming for these guys. You can see them kind of hanging out in the top uh, center of their enclosure there. And uh, here's just a real quick walk around so you can kind of see all the monkey habitats are kind of uh, built the same with the same kind of rocks and climbing structures and stuff, but lots of space for them to move. And again, very open, very cool. And here we go, the lorikeets. So as we take a look at the lorikeets, you have to walk through this little gift shop because obviously they want people to buy things. We're gonna take a look at the lorikeets and that is pretty much the end of the vlog. So if you guys made it this far, uh, thank you so much because this was a long one. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and you enjoyed the vlog. I have two or three more vlogs to get done. I promise I'm going to really try and get those out uh, before 2024. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got some inspiration. If you did and you made it this far, um, here's my YouTube spiel. Go ahead and hit the like button down below and leave me a comment. I asked a couple questions throughout the vlogs. Would love if you answered those or just tell me what your favorite animal was that you saw. You can see here the little lorikeet was on my shoulder. I, I love these guys. It's so fun. It's so much fun to uh, hang out and have them fly and land on you. Um, but again, I'm a bird person, so I love it. Anyway, back to the YouTube spiel. Hit the subscribe button if you're interested in any more uh, zoo vlogs, zoo information, or Planet Zoo, Prehistoric Kingdom, Jurassic World Evolution 2, any of the games that we play here on the channel. I um, try to upload fairly regularly, but uh, but yeah, there's the Laura Keats, and this was Zoo uh, Tampa at Lowry Park. Very pretty zoo, and I enjoyed it very much. Definitely wanting uh, to go back sometime soon because I feel like I missed a lot of animals that weren't actually out. You can follow me on all of my social media accounts. All those links are down in the description below. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye bye.